What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be my spoiler free review for Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. Last Night in Soho again is directed by Edgar Wright, who also co-wrote the script along along with uh, Christy Wilson. And it stars Thomas and McKenzie, Anya Taylor-Joy, Matt Smith, Terrence Stamp, Michael Ayo, Diana Rigg, Rita Tushingham, and Margaret Nolan. So this movie revolves around Eloise, who goes as Ellie, portrayed by Thomas Thomas and McKenzie. She is a student with a passion for fashion design, and she also has this ability to see see ghosts. So I guess you could say she has the sixth sense. <laughs> she finds herself transported back in time to 1966 London in the body of an iconic nightclub singer of the era named Sandy. While in Sandy's body, Ellie begins a romantic relationship, but she begins to realize that Sandy's life in the sweeping 60s is not as glamorous as it appears to be and both past and present begin to fall apart with horrifying consequences now this movie has a lot to say about individuality so we learn very early on that eloise is this aspiring fashion designer she wants to go to london to go to school she feels like she has something to prove because of because of some other familial uh trauma that she is dealing with also throughout the film and we see that she's very much reserved she doesn't seem to have that much she has confidence that she can prove something as it relates to completing this education in london for her dream of being a fashion designer but she's not very confident in terms of her social social environments and she's very much to herself she doesn't really stand up for herself when faced with confrontation from individuals who are kind of stepping all over her in ways as we're shown throughout the film and then when she is teleported essentially into this world of the 1960s with this former night singer or nightclub singer Sandy who is portrayed brilliantly by Anya Taylor-Joy it's just like a very a very interesting contrast that unfolds throughout the film early on where we're seeing that Sandy has the confidence and the swagger and just all the stuff that Eloise wish she had she's confident she knows how to she knows the move she needs to make to get what she wants and then you know early on after these dreams of hers I'll just say start happening she starts dressing like her she starts trying to imitate her but then of course as the dreams progress and progress she learns that Sandy ended up in a very dark place in London and she doesn't want to end up like Sandy and it's a, it turns into this very intriguing murder mystery along the way Edgar Wright does a very good job at setting you up with this protagonist who is very easy to get behind Eloise she is very sympathetic she has again this trauma that she's dealing with me being a screen fan I would say she definitely has some Sydney Prescott vibes that I was really just into right off the bat from learning what we did about the character very early on and just seeing how it progressed and seeing how she was seeing that reservedness and Thomas Thomas and McKenzie of course embodying that so so well in this role Thomas and McKenzie she is amazing here she's very convincing there she's she kind of plays the the same character in a lot of her roles but with here you see a different side of her her acting chops when we start to dig deeper into the mentality of Eloise and this the, this mental deterioration that she starts to go on after digging even deeper into what happened to Sandy in the 60s since she also has this obsession and this love and passion for the 60s she feels like the 60s were one of, was one of the greatest eras in in history so of course knowing what happened to Sandy and learning what happened to Sandy that kind of just warps her perception of the 60s even more to not kind of like also a reference to these old saying the grass isn't always greener on the other side everything isn't always how it appears to be on the surface so going back to Anya Taylor-Joy she is breathtaking here she is mesmerizing as this nightclub singer named Sandy who was ultimately just mistreated in the 60s you do learn a lot of what happened and what went on the film's themes of abuse trauma and again individuality they ring true while you're exploring what happened to sandy and as you're seeing the progression of eloise finding her own confidence throughout this trauma that she's not only dealing with on her own end but then seeing the trauma that sandy endured in the 60s so outside of that you do have some amazing shots throughout this movie there are some of the use of the mirrors and the reflections and just the duality of it all the way everything is bleeding into each other edgar wright is just on his best he's he's at his best in this film i wouldn't say this is like his best work ever i am a big sean of the dead fan i've seen his other movies like scott pilgrim versus the world and his other works but 
here he really just is tapping into the horror elements and he's doing it quite well i will say that some of them could have been more impactful in the sense that they weren't really that terrifying but i was still mesmerized and i found myself teleported into the roaring 60s and just everything on your screen is just beautiful visually the cinematography the neon lightings of red green everything just these vibrant colors that really just hone in on getting you as the viewer fixed in on all the events unfolding on your screen and then Steven Price's score kind of also transcends over certain things unfolding on your screen, amplifying them, making you really feel the terror that Eloise feels at times. Because this movie does have some genuinely terrifying moments, I would say, that are, again, well executed thanks to Edgar Wright's brilliant direction. And you just are this movie is a blast i had a blast with this movie i wouldn't say it is the neatest in terms of the last act because there are some little tidbits of details that happen throughout the first two acts that kind of let you know what happened to sandy what's actually going on here with between her and eloise uh you kind of get hints of that throughout the first two acts and i'll just i'll say that because i didn't really pick up on those up until the third act came and we got those major twists now it's with these major twists that you okay while the twists are i would say adequate you you are at the same time kind of undoing a lot of the themes that you're exploring about uh i would say toxic masculinity uh generational trauma not generational trauma but just trauma in general general when it relates to an individual and just kind of undoing this kind of like feminist narrative that you're trying to portray i would just say it's still overall a very well done film but towards the end it does kind of undo a lot of its own themes and certain character choices aren't that believable either it's very bizarre how the movie decides to wrap itself up satisfying still captivating hell of a good time but just not the neatest not the neatest edgar wright again he knocked it out of the park here i hope we see more of this from him in the future because just because i love this movie i'll give it a 7 out of 10 but if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and miss video in the description i have links to my social media accounts on my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video